This is going to be verse by verse of Psalms chapter number 16. We're going to talk about the subject of being unmovable. Paul talks about being unmovable in 1 Corinthians 15, 58, where he says, Therefore, my beloved brethren, be ye steadfast, unmovable, always abounding in the work of the Lord, for as much as ye know that your labor is not in vain in the Lord. So he says to be unmovable. And the psalm we're going to study today has the great phrase, I shall not be moved. In Psalm 16, 8, it says, I have set the Lord always before me because he is at my right hand. I shall not be moved. Here are some reasons why a Christian is unmovable. The first one is, God himself preserves me. In Psalm 16, 1, it says, Preserve me, O God, for in thee do I put my trust. 2 Timothy 4, 8, And the Lord shall deliver me from every evil work and will preserve me unto his heavenly kingdom, to whom be glory forever and ever. Amen. So preserve means to, to keep or save from injury or destruction or to defend from evil. So you believe God can preserve his word, then you believe he can preserve his saints. If he's going to preserve his word, he can preserve his saints. Once I got in the body of Christ, I was locked in. God himself preserves me because I can't preserve myself. I can't get out of the body of Christ. I can't lose my salvation. The verse said, For in thee do I put my trust. Psalms 20 and verse 7 says, Some trust in chariots and some in horses. But we will remember the name of the Lord our God. You trust in your house. You trust in your car. You trust in your family. You trust in your money. You put a lot of trust in your job. You trust in those things to take care of you. But most Christians are forgetting to acknowledge the Lord's existence. So Proverbs 3, 5 says, Trust in the Lord with all thine heart, and lean not into thine own understanding. In all thy ways acknowledge him, and he shall direct thy paths. So I'm unmovable, because the Lord himself preserves me. He's going to keep me. The book of Jude said he's able to keep me from falling. The Bible says we're kept by the power of God. I don't have to keep myself. The Lord keeps me. Many people believe that we got to keep the Sabbath today. That's not true. The Sabbath keeps us. So I'm unmovable because I'm preserved by the God who made the worlds. The next thing is I'm unmovable because I have the imputed righteousness of Jesus Christ. For this reason, I can't go to hell. I can't be under the wrath of God, and no being can break the seal on my soul and put me in hell. Also remember that this psalm we're reading here is a messianic psalm. You will find places where David is speaking for the Lord Jesus Christ himself. You find Jesus Christ in, any, in every chapter of your Bible. Always be on the lookout for him. And here's one of those places. Psalm 16, 2 and 3 says, O oh, my soul, though I said unto the Lord, thou art my Lord. My goodness extendeth not to thee, but to the saints that are in the earth, and to the excellent in whom is all my delight. So if David is speaking for Jesus Christ and says, To the Lord my goodness extendeth not to thee, but to the saints. This is referring to the imputed righteousness of the Lord Jesus Christ. Because at salvation he gave you his goodness, his righteousness, his goodness extends to the saints that are in the earth. We're the ones who need his goodness because we don't have any. In Romans 4, 6 through 8, it says, Even as David also describeth the blessedness of the man unto whom God imputeth righteousness without works, saying, Blessed are they whose iniquities are forgiven and whose sins are covered. Blessed is the man to whom the Lord will not impute sin. The reason you get to go to heaven when you die is not because you are righteous, but because Jesus Christ is righteous, and he gave you his righteousness when you believed. Next, we are unmovable because our names are in the book of life. Psalm 16, 4 says, Their sorrow shall be multiplied that hasten after another God. Their drink offerings of blood will I not offer, and I take up their names into my lips. 
So you see drink offering of blood. That's strange. That sounds like what the Catholics do. They believe their wine literally turns into the blood of Jesus. They also have another Jesus, which is another God. It's not the Lord Jesus Christ of the Bible. Just because somebody says that they worship Jesus, it doesn't mean they got the same Jesus that you have. But those wicked men who have rejected the gospel and are going after other gods, the Lord doesn't even want to mention their name. But if you're a born-again believer, you're unmovable. Philippians shows us that if you are a Christian, then your name is in the book of life. As a born-again Christian, nobody can take some big magic eraser and wipe your name from the book of life. It just can't happen. The Lord keeps it there. You'll never have to worry about him saying, I never knew you. Philippians 4.3 says, I entreat thee also, true yoke fellow, help those women which labored with me in the gospel, with Clement also, and with my fellow laborers, whose names are in the book of life. You can't be moved if you know your name can't be blotted out. You ought to have boldness because you know your name can't be blotted out. The whole forces of darkness of the spirit world could come against you at once. And you could lose everything you have in this temporary world. But they can't take your soul or your eternity. They can't blot out your name from the book of life. Psalm 16, 4. Their sorrows shall be multiplied that hasten after another God. Their drink offerings of blood will I not offer, nor take up their names into my lips. False gods do not fulfill. They bring more sorrow. Their sorrows multiply. Notice it says their sorrows shall be multiplied that hasten after another God. When you sin, you can expect your problems to just continue to pile up one after another. This is why many times people say more money, more problems. Uh, money can many times lead you into sin and sorrow. Rich people have money to get all the sinful things that they desire. Jeffrey Epstein, for example. He's pretty sorrowful right now. 1 Timothy 6.10 says, For the love of money is the root of all evil, which while some coveted after, they have erred from the faith and pierced themselves through with many sorrows. Notice it says, Their drink offerings of blood will I not offer. And the drink offering of blood is completely satanic. And now it says, Their sorrows shall be most multiplied that hasten after another god. They're going after another God, which is satanic. And their sorrows are being multiplied. They've got all this money. They love money. And they're using it to, to give glory to the devil, whether they know it or not. Paul says himself in the New Testament, in Acts 15, 29, he says that he abstained from meats offered to idols and from blood and from things strangled, and from fornication, from which if you keep yourself, you shall do well, fare you well. So you notice that the, the drink offering of blood is condemned in the New Testament. It's condemned before the law with Noah, and under the law even. It's condemned all through the Bible. Putting trust in money is condemned throughout the Bible. Having another God condemned throughout the Bible. And that's what a lot of people are doing. But it says their sorrows shall be multiplied. That hasten after another God. Their drink offerings of blood will I not offer. Nor take up their names into my lips. So he doesn't even want to say their names. The Lord knows your name. And I'd hate to think I did something that would make him not want to say it. Psalm 16, 5, The Lord is the portion of mine inheritance and of my cup. Thou maintainest my lot. The Lord is why your cup runs over. The reason you gave anything, you have anything good is because of the Lord. He maketh the sun rise on the evil and on the good. Look at everything that you have. Your house your car, everything that you have, your wife, your kids, the Lord allowed you to have it. 
when you get up and you go outside and it's a nice day, the Lord allowed it to be that way for you. It ought to be a hurricane coming down on you. But you ought to have just your whole world taken out from under you, but the Lord is allowing you to have all these blessings in your life. Psalm 16, 6 says, The lines are fallen unto me in pleasant places. Yea, I have a goodly heritage. The lines had to do with measuring land. And if the lines are falling under you in pleasant places, then you have a good place to live. I have a goodly heritage. It says, I have a goodly heritage. Even though I wasn't saved as a young kid, I had influences in my life to teach me the Bible. I had a goodly heritage. Just like Paul tells Timothy, he says, And that from a child thou hast known the holy scriptures. Timothy had a goodly heritage with his uh, grandmother Lois and his mother Eunice. You know, they taught him the holy scriptures. And if you were taught the things of God growing up, you have a goodly heritage. Psalm 16, 7, I will bless the Lord who hath given me counsel. My reigns also instruct me in the night seasons. So if you yield yourself to the Holy Spirit, then he will show you what to do in the night seasons, the times of darkness, death, temptation, and hell on earth. He will instruct you through his words. As he says in 2 Timothy 3.16, all scripture is given by inspiration of God and is profitable for doctrine, for reproof, for correction, for instruction in righteousness. And he said, I will bless the Lord who hath given me counsel. Realize you don't know more than the Lord. You can't give him advice. Many times when I'm training somebody at work, uh, I've been doing the job a while, but yet they start training me, giving me advice. And that's stupid, but that's exactly what people do with God. God's been here, obviously, a lot longer than you have. He made the world. He knows what you're thinking. He can see the future, yet you think you know enough to tell him how it's going to be. That's the way people are today. Romans eleven thirty four, For who hath known the mind of the Lord, or who hath been his counselor? Their answer is nobody. Not me, not you. God knows best. If you die, he knows best. If your child dies, he still knows best. Psalm 16, 8, I have set the Lord always before me, because he is at my right hand. I shall not be moved. Romans 8.31 says, What shall we say then to these things? If God be for us, who can be against us? And if nobody can come against you, then you can't be moved. You're unmovable. Psalm 16.9 and 10, Therefore my heart is glad, and my glory rejoiceth. My flesh also shall rest in hope, for that thou wilt not leave my soul in hell, neither wilt thou suffer thine holy one to see corruption. And then it repeats this again in the New Testament, this prophecy about the Lord Jesus Christ, where it says in Acts 2.27, Because thou wilt not leave my soul in hell, neither wilt thou suffer thine holy one to see corruption. So this is about the Lord Jesus Christ. When Jesus Christ died on the cross, his soul went to hell and to the heart of the earth. But look what it says. He didn't leave his soul in hell. Neither did he suffer his holy one to see corruption. Psalm 1611, Thou wilt show me the path of life, and thy presence is fullness of joy. At thy right hand there are pleasures forevermore. Hebrews 1125 says, Choosing rather to suffer affliction with the people of God than to enjoy the pleasures of sin for a season. So, you're unmovable. You've already won. You're on the winning side. You might as well stay in fellowship with the Lord. Stay in His presence through listening to preaching, reading the Bible, praying, whatever you got to do to stay in the presence of God. And you know what I mean in a practical sense because you're always in the presence of God. But what I mean is get rid of all the junk and just get around God. Stay in the presence of God. And that means more than going to church. 
A lot of people think that they're only in the presence of God when they step inside of a church building. And preachers have led them on with this thing for a long time, that you, uh, when you enter the church building, you're entering the presence of God. That's completely untrue, and that's why people live like the devil when they're not at church, and then when they enter church, they act like just a completely different person. But God is with you all the time. It's up to you to get out your Bible, get on your knees and pray, and stay in His presence. And I'm speaking in practical sense here. And that way you'll be have fullness of joy. You'll be in perfect peace. Because at His right hand is pleasures forevermore. And not just pleasures of sin that only last for a season. These pleasures in Psalm 1611 are forevermore. They're forever. The pleasures of sin that last for a season... But with the Lord, the pleasures are forevermore. You know, we think about the torments of hell. And you think about, we can't even imagine how bad it would be. The torment that lasts forever. The same thing is true about an eternity with Jesus Christ. You can't imagine the pleasures that are going to last forever. It's the complete opposite. Same way hell has torments that last forever. Heaven will have pleasures that last forever. The eternity with Jesus Christ is a pleasure forevermore. What shall it profit a man if he shall gain the whole world and lose his own soul? Are you going to live for the temporal things and forget about the heavenly things that are eternal? Most things that people enjoy in this life are temporal and sinful, and they only last for a little bit. But the things on the other side, when you get to heaven, when you get to eternity, these things are going to last forever. They can't fade away. They can't vanish away. And if you know that fact, it can make you be unmovable. If when you're going through this life and you realize that the things that happen here and the things that are dear to you here are just temporal and you got something waiting on you on the other side that's eternal, that can make you unmovable. That can give you boldness and confidence and it all comes from the Lord. But this has been Psalm 16 about being unmovable.